Hi, I'm Craig Moore. I'm glad you've joined me for an online maths lesson. Hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. Alright, let's get started. We're having a look at normal distribution curves and basically all of the data is centered around the mean, also the median in this case. So the mean of a population like this is identified with this symbol mu and I'm going to give it a data value of 40. So here we have our data value of 40. One of the interesting things with a, 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 a population like this, where we have it normally distributed, we have this convex shape turning into concave. And this point of inflection, this point here where it changes from convex to concave, we can actually calculate that out if we know mu plus one standard deviation. So this symbol here, sigma, if we know the standard deviation, and let's say it's 5, then that'll make this value here 45, and that'll be that point of inflection. Now, because it's nice and even, it means that on this other side, the mean minus one standard deviation, that'll give us a value there as well. So there are a couple of other spots that we need to mark on. We need to mark on mu plus 2 times the standard deviation, and uh, the average of the population plus three times the standard deviation, and we'll do the same heading off in this direction. The, the uh, mean minus two times the standard deviation, and the mean minus three times the standard deviation. Okay, so now one of the things that uh, is a feature of these types of graphs is that very reliably between the mean plus one standard deviation, we always have 34% of the data because this is evenly distributed, we're going to have 34% of the data here as well. In this zone here between the mean plus one standard deviation and the mean plus two standard deviations, we always tend to have around about 13.5% of the data in this zone. And on this side, in this area here, pretty reliably we have 2.35% of the data and above we actually have a very small amount of data, basically 0.15% of the data is sitting up there. So we'll just shoot that in there as well. 2.35% of the data and 0.15% of the data. I'll just fill in across the bottom here as well because we're, we're heading up in you know, 5 as a standard deviation value. That means that this is going to be 50, this is going to be 55 here at mean plus three times the standard deviation. And heading down here, it's going to be 30 and 25. So you'll probably end up with a question that, that asks you something along the lines of what what is um, what is the a percentage of data that's sitting between 35 and 45? Or it could be worded a little bit differently. It could be like, what is the percentage of data sitting between uh, the the average of the population minus one standard deviation and the average of the population plus the standard deviation. So basically it's 34 plus 34, so we end up with a value which is 68%. Now we've been working with graphics calculators uh, fairly recently in a big way, and one of the things that we've got here as a feature is that we can do some of this stuff using the graphics calculator. So if you go to stats mode, and hit execute and we're going to have a look at a distribution and the distribution is going to be a normal so f1 and we've got three different features here of our, that we can use with our graphics calculator we're going to use this ncd value f2 so we're going to set based on the, the problem that we've just been looking at we're going to set a lower value and an upper value so we'll start with our lower value of 35 hit execute uh, then our upper value of 45 and then we need to put in our standard deviation of five and our mean of our population, which was 40. And if we hit execute again, we'll end up with a percentage, which is in decimal point form of 68.2%, which pretty much matches in with what we were looking at. Now, the beauty of the graphics calculator, if we just go exit, is that we can work outside of those boundaries of, of 35 to 45. We could look at the percentage of data that's sitting between, let's say, 37 and 45. So all we have to do here is change this this lower boundary to 37. So 37 and we'll hit execute twice and we end up and we can see that we've got 56.7% of the data 
is sitting there between those two values. Now you might actually be interested in the amount of data that's sitting between the lower value of 37 and the upper value, which is basically all the rest of the graph. So we we really want to go to something as high as quite as high as possible for our upper value. And the way you do that is by changing this upper value to exponent 99. So this is a really huge number. We hit uh, execute twice. You can see that we've got 72.5% of the data is sitting between 37 and the top half of the graph. Now, if we we're interested in the bottom half of the graph, so let's make our upper value this time, let's make that 30, let's make it 36. All right, so I'll just go up here, make our upper value 36. And we wanna know all of the, the data sort of below that. So we'll make our lower value as low as possible. What we have to do for that, this is the tricky bit, is you need to go minus exponent 99. So that's a really low number. Hit execute and we'll hit that again. And that's telling me that I've got 21.1% of the data between 36, which is our upper value, and sort of dropping right down as low as we can possibly go. Let's have a look now at some of the other features. If we just go back to distribution and normal, and we'll have a look at this inverse normal value here. So this gives us a bit of an idea of um, if, if we set our tail at the left, so we're gonna have a look there. If we wanna know what, what value sort of lies uh, up here, let's say we're, we're interested in the value that we would have if we set our, our bottom half of our graph so that we have like 10% of the data sitting down there and we keep the standard deviation and the, the mean the same, what value are we gonna be ending up with? Is it gonna be sort of like 27 or is it gonna be 32 or is it gonna be, you know, whereabouts is this value gonna be if we have 10% of this, this graph uh, shaded in? So we hit execute and we hit that again, we can see that the value would be 33 and a half. So if I came here and 33 and a half somewhere around about here, well, that's telling me if I shaded this area here in is that 10% of the data is sort of sitting up in this part of the graph. If I wanted to uh, look at the right-hand side of the graph, then all I have to do is just go back up here and change that to right, which is F2. And I might be interested in the top, uh, let's say 35% of the data. So the area will be 0.35. And we hit execute. And basically the value, the data value is nearly 42. So we go here and mark on at about 42. Just go back to our calculator and, and go back. We can see that 35% of the data is sitting here in this 42 plus sort of zone, which is a pretty good feature. Now let's just go back to the normal distribution. Let's have a look at the NPD value. So F1. What we're interested in here is the percentage of data that's sitting at the point of one of these values across the, the graph. So I'm interested in the percentage of data sitting, first of all, the highest amount would be sitting here at the value of 40. So let's make 40 the value, and we're gonna keep the standard deviation and the mean the same. So if I hit execute twice, that's telling me I've got nearly 8% of the data is at the 40 point. Okay, so this value of 40, we've got about 8% of the data sitting here. All right, it's, it's at the 40. If I go back and I change this to, let's say 45, we'd expect to have less data at 45. So we'll change this to 45. Instead of about 80%, we're running at about nearly, well, shade under 5%. It's not gonna be much data sitting up here at the value of 50. Let's just go back, exit and change this 45 to 50. How much data is at the 50 point? It's around about 1%. So that means when we're getting up to uh, the, the mean of the population plus three times the standard deviation, there is not gonna be much data sitting at that particular value. In fact, if we go there and change it to 55, we're gonna find we have like this e to the minus uh, four, 
it's a massively small uh, number. So it's a massively small percentage of data sitting right up here. So um, there are a few of the features that work really well for our graphics calculator. And hopefully you found this uh, vodcast to be useful. All right, good luck.